Hello and welcome to How to Sell to Humans with Timothy Ball, a show about the art and science of selling. I'm a working sales and marketing manager in the UK and I want to talk uh, what it means to work in sales today rather than maybe what worked 20, 30 years ago, while also looking at those things that are timeless and don't tell the humans. Today we're talking about makers and sellers, uh, how those two can overlap or clash um, and how it can help you in building up your own business. Uh, a good friend of mine uh, called Justin Webb runs a great business called Sculpted with Light. Justin's a very skilled photographer whose business is all about helping creative industries sell through having great photos that reflect what a product will look like in real life. If you've ever bought something online uh, only to receive it and it looks nothing like the picture, then you know exactly the problem. And this is briefly what Justin works to overcome. And he works with amazing creative people from individual artisans to high profile fashion labels to help them sell more of their products and ensure higher customer satisfaction. For his clients, high quality images are, in their own words, worth their weight in gold. And uh, the reason I'm mentioning this whole idea about makers and sellers is Justin and I had a really interesting conversation recently about those two elements of business. You know, um, being able to create something and then being able to sell it. Being creative is a, it's a brilliant part of being human. Uh, and there is often a great drive to create something purely for art's sake, which is you know, absolutely fine if you can afford it. Um, and there are creatives who have you know, made something really successful, um, but then maybe drop that product um, for something they viewed as more personal to them, rather than maybe what was the, maybe what was the top selling. I've also met a lot of people who are almost sort of scared to sell what they have or even to promote themselves. Um, uh, this can also come down in terms of uh, areas of like people looking for work or maybe they've got a dream job they, they're pursuing. Um, something I love doing in my spare time is helping my friends out by looking over their CVs and resumes um, when they're looking for that job and really helping them to kind of focus their message and you know, making it really clear what it is, what, you know, what it is they're selling, the experience and knowledge they have. Maybe it's not a physical product, but it's their experience and their skill set um, and also their mindset for the future. Um, as a result, uh, I'm really pleased to say a good number of my friends have gotten the interview um, and even gotten their dream job as a result, uh, which, is, uh, which is really great. I, I feel really pleased about that. Um, they're great people with a lot to offer value, um, but they sometimes need a helping hand to help communicate what it is they sell, um, what it does, how it does it, and why it is unique. Um, on a very practical level then, you know, if you're building a business or if you're promoting yourself or if you're doing these other elements, you really need to be able to both create something or to offer something of value, maybe not something you're personally selling, but you're selling behalf of someone else, and then be able to sell that, even if it's getting someone else to support you on the selling, to help you focus on that message. One of the best business books I've ever read, and I cannot recommend it highly enough, is a book called The Personal MBA by uh, Josh Kaufman. If you've not read it, then do so as soon as you can. He takes a lot of complicated business stuff um, that looks like from up from the outside looks incredibly complicated and he just makes it really crystal clear how this how it works. At the core of a lot of what he talks about is um, how business itself is a repeatable process. And he's, uh, he, he outlines essentially five parts of a successful business process. So the first part is uh, create something, uh, create delivers something of value. So this is your value creation. And then once you've created that value, then it needs to be something that other people want or need. So this is, uh, this is the marketing aspect. And then the third part is, it's at a price that they're willing to pay. So this is the sales aspect. You've created something, you've got your market, now you need to get them to pay. And you need to get it in a way that they are willing to pay for it. Fourthly, you need to do it in a way that satisfies the customer's needs and expectations. So that value delivery part. Fifth, so that the business brings in sufficient profit to make it worthwhile for the owners to continue operation. This is the financial element. And without this final part, it's, it's not repeatable. 
uh, Kaufman quotes the entrepreneur Paul Fried when he says that uh, a business is a repeatable process that makes money. Everything else is a hobby. Now, there's absolutely nothing wrong with hobbies. You know, there's nothing wrong with if you enjoy painting or fishing or, or creating things in your spare time. But if you miss any of those five things, you don't have a long-term business. Now, in terms of makers, I mean, some of the most successful artists in the world um, you know, died broke. Uh, Vincent van Gogh is a prime example. You know, during his lifetime, I think he sold maybe, what, one or two actual paintings? But, uh, and, but he died broke. But now his paintings, and it may be age, it may be all these other things, time that has passed, but his paintings now sell for millions. So, in contrast, um, the Dilbert cartoonist Scott Adams, who's a, a very, very smart man, he speaks about building a, what's called a talent stack. So, meaning you don't necessarily need to be bad, the best at everything. And he, he, he'll freely admit he's not the world's greatest artist ever. But you should build up multiple skills across a variety of areas to succeed. In his case, he combined things like, you know, decent cartoon skills. You know, you look at his cartoons, very clear what they are, very sort of simple. Um, business experience, he worked for Packard Bell, all these other sort of Pacific Bells, right, and some of these other organizations. And he's also been, uh, you know, very, very full on with using social media. I think he was one of the first cartoonists to include his own email address in his cartoons. Sort of let me know what you think about the cartoon. So he's embraced, in many ways, both being, you know, key elements of both being a maker and a seller. Now, it's also crucial to point out that, you know, with a talent stack, there will always be areas we're not strong on. And in those, it's really worthwhile hiring someone. You know, if you're, for example, selling a product and uh, you, wanna, you want help with kind of how it looks online and how it then reaches the customers, you know, how that impression they, they make, then it's worthwhile speaking to someone, to someone like Justin at Sculptor Delight, um, or someone else who has that ability that you, you lack, uh, or even taking training courses in, in, new, th in new skills. And maybe if you're, if you're a maker and you're trying to understand how to sell, maybe take a course in sales. Uh, there's different ways you can do this. There's options, there's, there's lots of training things online. I mean, I'll talk a little bit about maybe those in a, a future video. But, um, uh, and also, I mean, that training can even come through through reading a great book like The Person MBA. I've learned so much and taken so much from a huge range of books that I've read, from loads of different writers, and I've then, I've then applied them into the way I act in, in person, the sort of the, the, the way I do business. They've been hugely influential for me. Um, so I hope that's been useful for both makers and sellers. And I welcome your comments below. I'll also include some key links in the description as well. Uh, one other note from my previous video. If you're still wondering what the two most important words are in sales, uh, then I should probably make it clear that I, I was referring to if and then. Uh, which is all about ensuring you get that kind of reciprocity and agreement on each stage of the sales process with your current or potential customer or client. Um, it's one of the best pieces of sales advice I've ever been given, and I'm really happy to pass it on. Thank you for watching How to Sell the Humans with Timothy Bull. Uh, if you want to see more, then make sure you subscribe and check the notifications button. It's, it looks like a bell down there. For now, good day and good selling.